ಓಂ ತತ್ಸವಿಹರಿಣ್ಯಂ ಭರಗೋ ದೇವಸ್ಯೀಮಹಿ ದಿಯೋ ಯೋ ನ ಪ್ರಚೋದಯಾಂಧಂ Saram saram everyone so today I'm going to share with my one more uh, story uh, about Satya Sai Baba our swami well uh, it's happened um, in the beginning of 2000s when swami was physically with us in prashanti nilayam and um, in 90s i was his um, translator but in 2000s uh, this service this wonderful job was done by some some other russian guy uh, and um, well the story uh, is um, uh, about very in- interesting situation which happened in Sai Kulvant Hall so called Mandir so the main temple uh, the main hall of the Satya Sai ashram that's exactly the place where we have uh, his divine relics his divine tomb okay in this lifetime i was born as christian and honestly speaking uh, more i was Uh, with swami in this life uh, and i say was because th- i remember about this wonderful time when he was physically yeah in present uh, in put party so it, so it means that's the reason why i say i was because of course when swami left his physical body anyway he is with us in our hearts but still when we remember that golden time when it was possible to communicate with him quite on the physical level yeah we say was were etc well actually swami's influence spiritual influence on my life huge i can't even describe it and um after years actually it was approximately 20 years of staying in put party i was coming and going so never staying permanently but you know, a few months every year actually i became much more christian than i was when i came to the ashram for the first time he helped me to understand that each and every religion is absolutely divine and if divine plan okay for my soul is to be born this lifetime in a christian family in a christian country so i'm from russia so it means um some important experience waiting for me exactly regarding okay bible and jesus etc but at the same time of course i study vedic and buddhist tradition seriously for years i practicing meditation of kriya yoga and bija mantras and i teach meditation of kriya yoga and uh, i like mantras and i like vedic hymns like guru stotram like datta stava like um, Shiva Panchakshara Stotram uh, all that beautiful Nirvana Shatkam etc etc and one of the uh, we can say hymn or we can say scripture which i really enjoy to chant sometimes is Narayana Upanishad and Narayana Upanishad is a very special actually a uh, short masterpiece of vedic philosophy and our swami paid really attention and he point to his students and devotees both indian and foreigners that this narayana upanishad is very important 
Okay, I'm not going to speak about the meaning of Narayana Upanishad, you can read it yourself. But just a few words maybe I say about it. That what is wonderful about Narayana Upanishad that it's both Bhakti and Jnana scripture. Some people approach Narayana Upanishad purely as the Bhakti or devotional scripture. And some people approach Narayana Upanishad purely like Advaita Vedanta scripture. So teaching about non-duality. But what is the beauty of Narayana Upanishad is that both philosophical systems we can find there. And actually it's impossible to divide them. You know, it's like, how can you achieve wisdom through Jnana if you don't have Bhakti or devotion? Impossible. You must be Bhakta, then only Lord God will bless you. And through His grace, you will experience Jnana or wisdom. And at the same time, if you wish to say that you are just practicing Bhakti, Yoga or devotion, then wait a moment, the question is what is the result? In any way, result is sweetness of wisdom. And let me repeat, wisdom is not something dry, philosophical, scientific. True wisdom, true with real wisdom, which is wisdom of Lord God, our Swami, it's always sweet. The sweetness of wisdom is also very important. Because if somebody entertain just thoughts, ideas, concepts about, okay, let us say Vedanta, that's dry thoughts. It's not experience. If somebody may experience truth of oneness and non-duality, always sweetness and bliss and joy will be there. Okay, I remember at that time I was yeah <coughs> staying for a while and put party and some strange thoughts um, came to my mind. Of course now I'm ready to laugh but you know at that moment it was quite serious doubts. Well, if I'm practicing Christian prayers, then why I have to practice all that Guru Stotram, Nirvana Shatkam, Shiva Panchakshara Stotram, and plus Narayana Upanishad? Maybe it's not even good. Maybe it's not good to mix it. After all, I can be Sai devotee and practicing just Christian prayers. That was my thoughts. Of course, that's childish ideas, but okay. It was beginning of 2000s. And it was a certain moment in my spiritual development when this question came to my mind. And I was um, at that moment in Prashanti Nilayam, I mean in um, Sai Kulvund Hall, and that was some kind of you know, evening or morning, even I don't remember, just program in a divine presence of Swami. He was just sitting on his chair in the very center of uh, Mandir. Uh, and there's just some students um, performed some musical program. And then, you know, I understood that Swami just looking at me. I was sitting some somewhere like close to the first line. And I was sitting at that moment and just keep on thinking about, okay, must I practice this Narayana Upanishad or not? Or maybe just better to concentrate on um, Christian prayers like this. And it was absolutely clear that Swami was just looking at me at that moment. And I understood, this was my feeling, that he is just reading my thoughts. Of course, yeah. And then what's happened next was really <laughs> unbelievable. He, he stopped this musical program. Okay, something happened, something happened, and then um, some, whatever, teachers of university, professors of university, uh, after Swami stopped, uh, stopped this 
a musical program performed by students. Okay, some teacher took some small boy next to Swami. Okay, this small boy, okay, he's a student. Okay, they gave him microphone. And uh, then Swami told, okay, this student, he will chant some something. Well, and then Swami told that, okay, this student will chant actually Narayana Upanishad. That was nice for me because, you know, I'm just sitting and thinking about Narayana Upanishad. Just for you to understand, if you don't know, of course, most of you know, but just if you don't know, it's like kind of maybe two and a half pages, the size of this, you know, uh, this book, two and a half pages, yeah. Well, uh, and actually it's possible to memorize it, yeah, not, not so difficult. And this, well, kind of teenage boy, he just chanted beautifully, classically, this Narayana Upanishad. I was very happy because that was like sign for me that, okay, look, I have to practice it. But then it was, you know, that's not the end of the story. Then Swami told, you know what is, uh, just he told it to a few thousands of people who were in Sai Kulvund Hall at that moment. And he told, you know what is special about this student? He is not Indian. He looked like Indian, but he is not Indian. He is from Iran. And he is not Hindu. He is Muslim. And he lives with his parents. He in put party, and he is a student. And then Swami told that actually, you know, you can follow any religion. Any religion you can, you know, study and chant Vedic uh, scriptures or hymns because it's just universal. You don't need to be Hindu to study Bhagavad Gita, for example, or Upanishads. You don't need to be Hindu to practice Gayatri Mantra. You don't need to be Hindu to chant uh, Narayana Upanishad as well. And that was kind of divine shock for me because that was exactly the answer to my doubts. And it's happened just in a huge hole. <coughs> um, and yeah, Swami told that this student, he is not converted into Hindu religion, he is not planning to change his religion, he is a Muslim, it means... He, he, he can practice um, his uh, traditional prayers according to the Muslim religion. But at the same time, why not to, you know, to, um, to be open to the wisdom of the Vedic scriptures? Of course, uh, I can say the same, like, uh, for example, you don't need to be Christian to study Bible. You don't need to be Christian to meditate on Jesus. The same way you don't need to be Muslim to read and enjoy great philosophy of Quran. You don't need to be Buddhist to study Buddhist scriptures and learn some Buddhist meditation maybe even. So, uh, this miracle which yeah we discussed today, that's actually a miracle and I think very important one because uh, quite often we um, mean by miracle, we mean, okay, materializations or healing. But the top level um, miracles, according to my vision, is actually when it's directly may transform people or somebody. And of course, in this particular situation which we discussed today, Swami expressed his love, compassion, understanding of my inner world at that moment. Of course, needless to say that he as Divine Incarnation um, was absolutely clear when that's obvious, too obvious. But he helped me to 
purify my poor mind and um, you know shift to the next step and come to deeper synthesis and understanding of oneness so that's story for today Saram see you next time सवितुर्हरिण्यम भरगो देवस्य नीमहि दियो यो नक प्रचोदयान्धम